hello there. How you doing today? You might recognise my voice from some little ditty called Contemplation. You might, you might not. You should, because it's fucking brilliant. But yes, this is a little thing. I thought I'd do a little spin-off on my own little channel, because, well, the reason I'm doing this is because I just enjoy talking shit. And you might as well be able to hear it. Also, if you've read, I don't know why I'm doing an Australian accent. Oh, no, I do. It's because I've been watching this thing recently on YouTube called No Novimpia? Novimpia. And the person who does that does an Australian accent. And now I can't stop doing it. So get used to that. Anyway, yes, this is just going to be something little. Get yourself a cup of tea, a lovely armchair, some beautiful company, and just sit back and listen to my dull, thick tones. Speaking of tea, hang on. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. you got to have a little, little cup of tea with a natter. Anyway. Oh, speaking of YouTube, I've just recently watched the YouTube Rewind 2018 Jesus Christ, it was shit. It was so boring. I didn't recognise half the people. And the people I did know were just really dull. Like, what's her name? The one who used to have a really big nose. And she was really thingy about it. Oh, no, more no. What was Gibby? Gabby. Gabby. She used to be on Vine. Was it Vine? That one. And my God, and started preaching about... Okay, everyone, can we just take a second here and really, really, truly true pay homage to those people less fortunate than us, the refugees, the uh, the people who don't make as much money as us, pretty much everyone, because we're filthy rich. Oh, I hate them. They're all bastards. But no, I thought they'd go along the lines of... They should. They missed out on a big opportunity of using Logan Paul. I mean, he's big. Might not be liked, but he's fucking huge. KSI. They could have done something with the boxing, boxing match. Which, by the way, did you watch that? I wasn't overly impressed. I wanted more blood. That's just me. I didn't know that they'd be going along the lines of big full headgear. But no, I wanted more blood. Anyway, uh, yeah, KSI, possibly the brothers, low, Jake Jake Paul, definitely, because that Shane Dawson thing. Has he ever been on it, by the way? Shane Dawson on YouTube Rewind. I'm not, I don't think he has. It might have been once, like, a little fleeting thing. But YouTube hate him, and no one knows why. <laughs> it's probably because he's a little controversial. But he's like the biggest bloody YouTuber out there, apart from PewDiePie. And he wasn't on it either. Which, it was noticeable. Let's say, it was quite noticeable. I'm not fond of the fellow myself. I don't watch any of his shit. It's not my type of thing, you see. But there's no doubt, everyone knows him. He's like a household name now. Oh, do you know PewDiePie? Yes, he's that YouTuber. He just plays games, doesn't he? Minecraft and all that. No, he wasn't on it. Um, oh, let me see who else was on it. No one, like, really big. They they were really banging home, like, international YouTubers. There was one Brit on there. <laughs> they picked the most boring one. Oh, excuse me, that was my phone. Um, oh, what was I saying? Fucking hell. Lost the train of thought. On that note, another slurp of tea. Oh, hang on, that's hot. Oh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. I'll change accents. Uh, right, what are we talking about? Do you remember? I've completely lost a train of thought. Yes, it was a British chap on there. It was that one who looks kind of like a child. He's got a very small face, light, fluffy, blonde hair. Looks like he should have a lollipop in his hand. Uh, and then there was a lot of Spanish... A lot of Korean. Oh, let's do K-pop, guys. And then we're like, doing a weird little dance. I've never listened to K-pop. 
It's that, I've seen a clip of it. It's so millennial. It's that type of shit. Like, you know, the millennials go under a bridge, bobbing their heads, hating their parents. No, that was quite dull. There'd nothing really happened, they said. Oh, Will Smith was in it. That was a big one. I mean, after his career dropped, after that film, what was it? Suicide Squad. Jesus Christ. Clawing at the bottom of the barrel. Why was he on it? Did they watch YouTube? Or they were like, do you know what? I know exactly what happened. They went to him. Hello, Mr. Smith. How are you? Right, there's this, uh, it's just a little thing. It's like a student project called YouTube. Would you mind just doing a few lines? We'd be happy to imburse you. Re not reimburse, that's wrong. Pay. Just go pay. I couldn't think of a fancy word. We'd be happy to pay you for your time, sir. If you could just do it from your little mountain retreat. That would be lovely. Just show everyone, yes, I'm still famous. But I, I didn't really see the point. A celebrity endorsement. <coughs> Have they ever been good? Like, really, really shit. If a celebrity endorses anything like an advertisement, does that make you want to buy it? Does it really? I fucking doubt that. Wait, what's that thing? I saw... What's up, her name? For instance, I wouldn't really call her a celebrity. Oh, is it Charlotte? Or Scarlet? Off. She used to be off Gogglebox. And then she ended up going in the jungle and... Did she win? I think she won. She's like, sort of, right. Download the... Ce I'm a celebrity up now. I, I don't forget her accent. And does that immediately go, oh, she said it now. I'm going to fucking get my iPhone now. Does it bollocks? If anything, it goes, fuck you. I don't want to listen to you. I don't even know you. Oh, I can't stand her. She's a, she's a weird looking thing. You're horrible. Oh, yeah, you should get used to that. There's going to be a lot of swearing in this thing. I'm hoping to make this somewhat of a semi-regular thing. I've got a lot of shit to talk about. And, oh, my mind's just gone completely fucking blank. A thousand yards stare. Yes, I'm wondering about this quite regular. There will be a lot of uh, taking the piss out of people, because that's fun. And copious amounts of swearing. But if you've listened to the other my podcast with a, a friend of mine, you'll know that I swear like a fucking sailor. <laughs> anyway. Uh, where we're on the thing. I'm a celebrity. Oh, yeah, I could talk about I'm a celebrity, actually, on that note. What do you think of it? If you th think it's good, you're blind. It's <sighs> so shit. Holly Willabooby is absolute garbage. I don't know why they picked her. I believe... Oh, sorry. Move the microphone. Just destroy the illusion. <laughs> Deck... Is it Deck? Yes, and it's the one who's off his tits. Deck said, I couldn't work with another man. I can only work with a woman. And they said, right, but it has to be ITV, ladies. Because if we pick, like, Mary Berry, one, she'll collapse. Two, have you seen that hand of hers? It's a bit gammy. Frighten the kiddies. Uh, oh, I'm going on to Mary Berry soon. Don't you worry. I've got a lot to say about her recently. Uh... But yes, so they picked Holly Willoughby. I mean, could you have picked a more boring plank of wood? There's nothing, nothing to bounce off of. He says a joke and usually Ant pricks it up with a little bit of his joke. Evening, Prime Minister. Something like that. You know, the classic Ant and Deck that's synonymous with Christmas time nowadays. And now it's just her going, <laughs> You're so awkward, Ant. <laughs> now it's Deck. Fuck. They're too similar. Anton Dick. Anthony and Dicklin. No. Don't like her. So boring. Doesn't help. She's blonde. Anyway, the main... How long have I been recording? About ten minutes. If you're still here... God, you're a fucking trooper. Hang on. Oh, it's beautiful. 
right temperature, right taste, good consistency. I'm drinking black coffee. Can't have it any other way. Got to have it black. Got to taste the ashes. I don't understand how people... It is a peculiar taste, just black coffee, no sugar. Because it is like just pouring water into a bunch of ashes and drinking it. It tastes burnt. But I like bitter. It reminds me of myself. So, yes. The whole reason I wanted to do this little podcast, well, the first one anyway. Uh, I recently went to Birmingham, and it was lovely. I went up there because I had to do a few bits, but while there, I managed to catch the Birmingham, the BBC Food Festival. <gasps> Beautiful. Realised I was going up to Birmingham. I thought, oh, get a bit more shit done. So I booked to see Mary Berry. <laughs> oh, see that link? Because I fucking don't. But yeah, basically, if you don't know what it is, it's like a massive fucking hall. It's like the size of an airport. They've got like loads of little things. I do think they have an airport. I don't think they have a train station. I saw signs for one anyway. Anyway, you have to park like a mile away. It's so big. And you have to get a little shuttle bus there. You go on. And... They get to the thing and he goes, right, if you want to go to the Birmingham Food Festival, it's halls 1 through 45. Fucking hell, how could, how big are these things in the halls? I'm like, Jesus Christ, it's a hall, it's like industrial, it's, it's fucking huge, basically. And it's got everyone there, everyone who's big on food. It's got every stall, Lakeland, I believe, had a stall there. Oh, it has some lovely little bits. They, I didn't know they started doing Harry Potter shit. It was like a big chocolate wand. Oh, sounds like a bit of a euphemism on the slide. Now they have chocolate wands, obviously Bertie Bots. They're old hat now. They're everywhere. You fall over them, like little shitty shops. People think it's still a novelty. Oh, I'm tasting dirt. Well, oh, I've got marshmallow. No one cares. Also, they also had chocolate frogs, but they're not the same ones. Depending on, on how old you are, you should remember when they actually brought out proper chocolate frogs, like in the little packet, and they were quite a hefty size. It's one like the Freddo was like still five pence. Ah, oh, those times! Jesus Christ! My fucking phone keeps going off. My apologies, frighten the shit out of me. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, chocolate frogs. I remember I used to get them, stick them in the fridge. It's quite sadistic when I think about it. Stick in the fridge and gnaw on its head. Like, grate it with my two front teeth. Until I could see teeth marks in its head. I wasn't a very nice child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But, yeah. But, no, these were, like, really shitty ones. Like, almost flat. There was nothing to them. Oh, it was quite. It was quite disappointing. Also, I kept seeing. Wi- I forget what the name. It's something Willy. It's it's a chocolate man. Willy Waplo. I don't fucking know. And every time I see Willy and see it's chocolate, I think Wonka. But obviously, it's not. They should do that. Do you know how good that would be? People. Queue for miles. I remember when they brought some chocolate out about Willy Wonka. I don't know when. It, I think it was around the time. Or was it in between? I don't know. Not the new film. That one with Johnny Depp in it. Doesn't he remind you of a molester? It's not. It's kind of weird. But was it after that? Was it in promotion of that? Or was it before that? I don't remember. They had, like, different flavours. Like, the strawberry one. I was only, like, a small child at the time. So I only got, like, got a little bit. Because chocolate is bad for you, Connie. Says my mother. And I was already a fat child. She couldn't afford any more food. But, yes, I went to Lakeland. They had all of them, but most of them, had, like, free samples that you can go around and try. But the only shops that seem to do the free samples are ones that do cheese and ones that do sausages. Jesus Christ. I hadn't eaten. I had to get up at five in the morning and arrive there at 11-ish. 
11 ish, yeah, 11 ish. And I hadn't eaten, so I was quite peckish. But the time I, by the time the whole thing ended, I was so full on free samples. Also, the alcohol, good God! The, you know those little sampler cups, like the little plastic ones you can get at like Asda or something? Or Waitrose, <laughs> fancy! Hang on. Oh, it's beautiful, I don't know why. I just did something about drinking hot liquid, and that's disgusting. Get your mind out of the gutter. It's, uh... Oh, fucking hell. Every time I go off on a tangent, my mind just <laughs> shits its knickers. No, it's gone. Alcohol! That's the one. Uh, like little ones, like little things. Nearly every stool does that. Even if they don't do alcohol, they seem to just like, have some alcohol, have a biscuit with it. So I tried every... This vodka, gin... Like weird little liqueurs, everything. I tried um, that lemon, limoncello, limoncello. Oh, that went right through me. Oh, it was disgusting. Oh, it was like smooth, but like not a good smooth. It like coated the inside of my throat. It was. It made you do that noise. You know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You drink something, you and you like get gizzards, like you're a multi-layered chicken. But you're absolutely off your tits, I tell you. After the first, because I hadn't eaten anything, and that was the first thing I went to with alcohol. I was quite tipsy after the third stall, because I had nothing to line my stomach. I was absolutely, I was off my tits by the fifth. But no, it's absolutely, you spend, <clears throat> you could spend two days there. In fact, they go on for thingies, like a few days. And different days, they have different people coming, like to give talks, presentations, and I went to the one with Mary Berry. Excuse me. It's that coffee. And God almighty, no one cared. I was, like, up in arms. They had on the, the like, the advertisement thing when you're going in, like, BBC Food Show Festival, whatever. And they had, obviously, all the people they had Michelle Rue, if you don't know him. He's a very famous cook. I think he's got, like, Michelin stars, I think he has. He used to be on MasterChef Professionals until he was like, nah, I'm bored of this shit, and bug it off and give it to Marcus. Yeah, they had him, they had that... I can never remember his name! Bald fellow, used to be really, really fat, and now uh, he's lost a lot of weight, and he's on telly a lot. Famous like a gas... It's gastro pub he owns? And it's like, that's got Michelin star. I don't know, he's very good, either way, he's very good. I don't like him, but he's very good. I don't like a lot of people... <laughs> Kill surprise. Um, they had a uh, ha. Oh, they had fucking Nadia. Right. I oh, know she's a ray of sunshine. I've watched everything she's been in because she usually goes like to Asia and like I want to try all these foods and it's lovely to watch. She grinds my teeth. I don't know what it is. I have no reason. And I find I don't. Do you find that? When you hate someone, but there's no actual reason, so that makes you hate them more. It's kind of like that. And she's on there. Why is she so famous? All she did was win Bake Off. Loads of people have done that, and no one's even come close to what she's done. I know that one who's won it recently is trying to, like, bolster himself up, because he was there, but he didn't have his own show. He was, like, tagging on to Paul Hollywood. <gasps> yes, getting back to that. It was Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood. I didn't think they'd have them in the same thing. I mean, I reckon backstage, if they passed each other, it was either cold as ice, or Paul tried to rip her wig off, like a little catty fight. Because they, they despise each other now. Ever since that uh, Mary left, because she was like, It's not on the BBC, so you can shove it. And Paul was like, do you know what I'm going to say? I'm proud of the fucking me. Oh, that's not what he sounds like, but you know, scarces all sound the same. Don't hurt me. It was so weird because he was like ne near her on like the picture. I was like, fucking hell, it's a bit catty. And everyone was like, oh, so, so. They're both, they're both cooks. They're both talking. I was like, yes, but they hate each other. It was so weird. No one give a shit. And I was, you could say, getting a bit too excitable. I was at the sixth stall by this and I was off my titties. But, you know, I still think it's valid. I remember because you can pass 
when they're doing, there's like a section where they do it. It's like behind the thick curtains and like stairs and you go up and it's like a sitting a seating area. You can only get in if you have a ticket to go and see them. But they show it on the TV. So I don't know why you'd even go and bother paying. It would have been that closer. You can just see it on the TV. It's like a big TV so you can watch it while you're knocking them back. And it was Paul and Prue, the other one they have done the Bake Off with. And I was like, ah, oh, Mary Berry's backstage. She's seething. She's doing rituals to curse that bitch. I, can't, I, was, I was flabbergasted. I didn't think I'd see them in the same bloody... What's the word? Not. I was going to say country. I'm hoping this is just coffee. <laughs> Probably not. I've spiked myself. No, I didn't think I'd see them in the same vicinity, within a mile of each other. But no, they were like tantalisingly close. And I was hoping that I'd see them pass. And someone comes back out with a black eye. Is that just me? No. I want to see Mary Berry dropkick that bastard. What? I, yeah. I don't know. I don't like Paul's nearly as much as Mary, but I've been slowly... Now, don't hate me. I've been slowly going off Mary Berry. I know. It's sacrilegious. It's almost as bad as going off of... Uh, fuck, what's her name? I should know her name. She did the Silk Road documentary. Join me on the Silk Road. She's on Absolutely Fabulous. Oh, Joanna Lumley. Boom. Got it. But now, I kind of put them together in the women I need to meet before I die. But Mary Berry slowly going off into the distance. It's just me and Joanna now. No, but if anything, it's gotten worse since I saw her. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Don't you worry. It's been building up to this, hasn't it? So, arrived there about 11. No, 10? About 10. And the show for Mary Berry is at four. Right, got loads of time to kill. I'm going to go around the store. I'm going to buy some stuff. Got some lovely... It was weird. It was like chocolate. Chocolate. Burnt chocolate? Liqueur? I don't know, but it went down a treat. So I got a bottle. Excuse me again. I can't help it. Excuse me a moment, actually. Ah, beautiful. Um, and it's gone again. Jesus Christ. No, bottle. Bottle. Uh, as much cheese as you could shake a sticky cow at. Uh, sausages out the wazoo. Those lovely things. There was, uh, obviously, advertisements for other things as well. It was like the... Pla the Air Force thing. And they were doing, like, little canapes, like, the army, things like that. Be a chef in the army. It was all based around food, except for the blind dog thing, where you donate and you give them a... Not a blind dog. Seeing dog. <laughs> can you imagine if the dog was blind as well? No, there was that, and there was like, can you give a bit of change? And when the, and after, next to that, there was a store where Mary Berry... I didn't know she had a brand, like, a, a thing of food. Like, she does, like, whips them out in, like, a, a factory or something. She had, like, she had all the classics, of course she did. She had, like, the banoffee pie, ginger cake. And I'm ashamed to say I bought them all. They were beautiful because they were giving out little samples. And there was, like, there was a, a sticky toffee pudding. And do you know what I said? I said to the person giving out the free samples... Bearing in mind, she's at the Mary Berry stall, so she knows where she is. I go, I hope it won't have a soggy bottom. Fuck all. Absolute nothing. Face like a pan of shit. She looked at me and just turned around. <laughs> I nearly died choking on my soggy bottom. Didn't get it. Oh, I laughed. Anyway. So, yeah, I wandered around and they came to four o'clock. I was all right. Let's go and see the berry. So you go in, you sit down, and it's got... For some reason, they've got fucking smoke machines, like it's some Blair Witch concert or something. Like, I'm expecting strobe lighting, dubstep to be blaring in the background. It's just fucking Mary Berry doing a bit of cooking. Turn the bloody fog machines off, you silly bastards. Maybe she requested it. 
so, yeah, got it, got in. Was waiting, coughing on all that fucking unnecessary fog. And then this presenter comes out. I've seen him off the television before, but he's nothing special. He's kind of like, oh, yeah, I recognise him. <laughs> Type of thing. So, are you mad? Right, hello, everyone. First of all, we've got this penny that's been signed by the lady herself, Mary Berry. And you're like, oh, fucking hell, here we go. And he comes out and it's, can we get the house lights on? So everyone, all the lights go on. You're like, for fuck's sake, I can't be dealing with this shit. And he goes, whoever screams the loudest gets them. There's only two. So, obviously, everyone, you get, there are, heart, there are two types of people. No, there are three. The one who does nothing. They refuse to move. They just sit there looking sternly like... I will not do something so fucking childish. How dare you ask me such a thing? They're boring bastards. And then there's people in the middle who are kind of like, oh, go on, I'll do it. I won't go full on because this is fucking stupid. But I'll give it a go, why not? It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? That's kind of where I sit the majority of the time, unless I really, really want it. In which case, I turn into the first group of these people who go fucking ape shit. Like, they're jump, they're climbing over people, like, clawing over, like, bodies, just getting higher, like, I want a fucking penny! It's a bloody penny. God, it was absolutely screaming. Anyway, so he comes running down, acting all excited. <laughs> God, he looked, if you looked, I saw him pass me, because I was, like, near the aisle. He passed me, and I could see the cold depression of death in his eyes. He looked so upset, but he had like that big fucking cheesy grin on. So he was like, who wants a penny? But his eyes said, kill me with the penny. So the first of all, he, you could tell he was done with the shit because as soon as he got off the stage, he just threw it in someone's face. Threw one and he was like, right, I need to go to the back. So he just ran to the back in that one aisle, gave someone to the back and went back on stage. Fucking two pennies. <sighs> It's not worth it. So, so they start coming on. Uh, yes, and so he gets on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the main event? I think this was the last talk of the day. You could fucking tell. It was quite half assed A lot of it. They went, do you want to do it? Yeah, alright then, let's fucking get on with it. So Mary Berry comes out. Everyone goes, woo! And I kind of look at her. Like, God, you're so small. I was looking for a soggy bottom, tell the truth. Now, that's disgusting. Excuse me a moment, I need to rehydrate. My mouth is getting a bit dry. I've been talking now, how long? 28 minutes-ish. Well, half an hour, let's just say. Are you bored yet? Please don't be bored. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying it. So... Um, yeah, so she comes on looking like she's off her tits. Because it's well known, isn't it, that Mary Berry's kind of a bit of a pisshead. Every time she's on the Bake Off or anything, she like tries it. Oh, this is a cherry liqueur sponge. It needs more liqueur. It needs more liqueur. This is a Victoria sponge. It needs more liqueur. It doesn't have liqueur. It needs it. Yeah, she's quite antsy about that and every time she's cooking at home she like pours it in you know, it calls for two teaspoons I'm going to pour in half the bottle Shh, and winks at the camera she already had the other half of the bottle <laughs> but fair play I'd love to have a drink with her hold her own she could drink me under the table she's had centuries to do it though hasn't she so <clears throat> she, come, she comes on and you tell me what do you expect a uh, baking legend of the sweet pastries and the cakes? She's a queen of that. What do you expect her to do? Cakes. She does chicken. You think, right, okay. I feel like I'm a bit fobbed off here, but you know, that's fine. Let's just see what you do with that chicken. So she gets the chicken. It's like a honey 
mustard chicken. She does that. It's a piece of piss. And she goes, for dessert, I'm going to do a banoffee pie. Her and Joanna Lemley have the same voice in my head. <laughs> I did a banoffee pie. None of it was baked. It was just, it was like kind of, she mushed up some digestive biscuits, shoved it in the bottom of the tin, and just spread cream and bananas on it. It was kind of, it's like, all right. The only thing she cooked, she didn't even cook it, was the chicken. She didn't cook it because she put it, she said, she'd give it to the chicken, would you put that in the oven? She'd put it in the oven. And then he reaches under the counter and pops another tray on with the chicken on. I was like, where the fuck did that come from? He's spawning chickens under the counter. And I'm assuming it was a, this is one we did before. It's boring shit. She said that a few times because she had to mash it up. She goes, now you need to let it rest for half an hour. I was hoping <laughs> for the pure comedy gold that she would just pop it in the oven, not in the oven, pop it in the fridge and wait there for the half an hour just staring at the audience, daring them to say anything. But no, she goes, this is the one I made, this is the one we made earlier. And then she kind of spilled the beans, went, oh, I didn't do it. <laughs> Someone else did it. Some lovely people here did it for me. <laughs> so she didn't even fucking do it. Lazy bitch. She was too busy backstage knocking back that bloody lemoncello. Uh, also, <laughs> she, she was quick and quite subtle, wink, wink, to get in a bit of self-promotion. Because we all know she has, like, things at Lakeland like weird little she has books she has the Mary Berry pot and pan non-stick all that shit because she used to be doing that that was her job wasn't it back back in the day the days of yore the good old days uh, she like sold up uh, sold English going out the window uh, she sold like ovens like mixers and all that so she's getting back to her roots so yeah she comes in and she whips up from under the counter a a book. And it's got her face on it. She, she doesn't say anything. She just... It was when she first came on, she just plops it on the counter, faces her the front cover towards the audience, and just leaves it. <laughs> I mean, what pure shit. And then she started talking about her husband. And she said, right, I left... I, I forget to change the voice. I left my husband at home with some smoked salmon, and before I came here, I realised the pots and pans were a bit, a bit ski whiff. Let's say, so I went to Lakeland and bought some new pots and pans. Lovely Lakeland. We all love Lakeland, don't we? Yeah, I'll bet we bloody do. They paid her to say that, no shadow of a doubt. I mean, she has endorsements with them. Like, they're going to say, right, yes, that'll be uh, twenty nine ninety nine for a little frying pan that can barely fit an egg in it. They go, right, you can have the fucking lot as long as you just say you got them here. So, a little bit of promotion there. Get them at Lakeland for your Christmas holiday. Nothing but the best for your family at Christmas. Oh, fuck off, you bloody bitch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then she started saying, you can find all these recipes in my book. Where can you get that book? Oh, okay. Lakeland. I mean, it's like... She's stupid. Like, we can't see right through her. This is the whole reason she's doing it. She couldn't even act it like a bit and just go, no, I'm doing this for you. I'm going to cook. I want you to watch. You're going to love it. We're going to see all the soggy bottoms. Paul can suck a dick. Oh, that forgot. They kind of paid mention to Paul Hollywood on it, and I nearly died. It was the only kind of good bit. It was, it was like another cookery book, because he'd been on that exact stage just like a few hours before with Pro. Oh, I bet you could smell her. No wonder she sounded pissed. So, yeah, they got a book and they opened it. And it was like for his for catch or something. And it has his picture on it. And while Mary Berry is like away cutting something or mixing something, the cameraman pens over to the book and, and like hones down on his face. And everyone's laughing because they're like, oh, Mary doesn't have a clue. She's like busy chopping something. And she goes, what's going on? Because everyone's laughing. And the cameraman's just like sort of looking at Mary, back to the book, back at Mary, back to the book. 
And then Sam Raimi like, puts the camera on his shoulder, grabs the cauliflower, and puts it on the picture. Oh, I think I've just tapped. No, I'm good. I thought I'd broken it. I'm not very technically inept. So yeah, he picks up a cauliflower and just pops it on the book. Ha <laughs> ha I really... But she was so stony cold. Because I think she kind of clocked midway through. She went, what's going on? Everyone's laughing. I don't know if she looked. Because she could see everything on the telly behind her. She probably saw it in a reflection of someone's glasses at the front row. But no, I think she clocked. And she didn't say a word. It, you could feel the ice around her. I mean, the, the chicken refrosted. It was, it was brilliant. I wish you would have done more. I wish you would have Well, at least I don't cook like him. Something like that. I just wanted to do a bitchy comment. How they got to look alike for her to do the bake-off. Coffee break. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. It's not as warm as it was. It's a shame. It's quite cold in here. Anyway. So, yes, right. I want to get to this thing, because it really fucking bothered me. And it should anyone who's ever eaten in her house. Most people know that when handling chicken, you need to wash your hands before you touch anything else. Right? Is that just me? No, it should be everyone. You touch chicken, your hands are full of chicken shit, you need to go and wash it. So Mary's handling the chicken, right? Tossing it about in the weird mustard thing that she'd done with sauce. And she does that, puts it down, and then she's fucking slapping her hand on every counter she can find. In the purse, the presenter is like, right, we've got some soap behind us and a little sink if you want to wash your hands, Mary. She looks at him and looks back at the audience and doesn't do it. She's kind of like, <laughs> bitch. So she carries on preparing. She's mashing up the biscuits. She's slicing the bananas with her hand. All the while, she's got chicken all over her hands. Raw fucking chicken. That's not allowed <laughs> anywhere. That is disgusting. Anyone who's eating that's got fucking salmonella now. Thank God she didn't dish it out to the audience. I would have spat in her face. God forbid what she does like Christmas dinner day. That mass, I'm sure she has a massive turkey. She's like lathering it up with the butter, spanking its soggy bottom. And she's just like rubbing her hands on the kids. Like, hello, darling, Merry Christmas. Why does your hands smell funny, Granny? It's because it's got turkey all over it, you little shit. Maybe that doesn't happen. Maybe that's all in my head. Pretty, it does happen though, let's be honest. So, yeah, so he kind of looks awkwardly at her, like, right, oh, you still haven't washed your hands, this is disgusting. Good job, now we know why well, she doesn't have like a little cafe or restaurant. Because you're like, right, I'd love to cook and eat them. Like, no, fuck off. And we'll get like a zero rating on like that restaurant. You know that green thing you see outside restaurants and like little cafes? We've got a five star rating. I've never seen one below three. Below three. I wonder what you'd have to do to get below three. What would you have to do to get a zero? Just shit on a plate and put some coriander on it and go, Merry Christmas, pet. No, cockroaches. Licking the faces of the customers. I don't know. Mary Berry in the kitchen. Any of these. So, yeah, that was absolutely disgusting. And the whole thing, it cost... I'm not going to care how much it cost. But it cost a decent amount. And do you know how long it lasted? Not even. <sighs> Barely scraped. 25 minutes, if that. I'm not even sure it was that. It was it was so abysmal, because everything had already been done, pretty much. She just made the sauce, put it on the chicken, stuck it in the oven. I don't even sure what the oven was on. It was like a light bulb. Pulls it out and, you know, that's it. Oh, she makes up an offy pie. That doesn't take a minute. It's nothing, no baking involved. That was already pre-done, and she just fucked off. Not before saying, Lakeland, one more time. Oh, God, I do believe this might be in my head. I might have tried to say things in my head. 
but I swear to God, she licked her fingers. I might be wrong. No, that's not true. But I'll tell you who did. I once knew someone. I was at the, I was at her house. Oh, fucking phone. It's ruining it. I'm so sorry, pet. My apologies. Um, I'm realising more and more how I, I'm literally just copying Novimpia off YouTube. Go and watch, and completely off topic, go and watch her. It's like, she's like a drag queen. She's beautiful. She's from Bournemouth, I believe. Don't know her real name. Uh, her, name her name's Olympia. Her drag character's Olympia. And it's literally this voice is what I'm doing. It's only in homage. I'm not trying to take it away from you, dear. It's only in homage because I think you're fucking brilliant. I'd like to talk about YouTube more. Maybe I'll do that next episode. Because I've got more stuff to say. <laughs> anyway. Um... What was that? What was I talking about before that? Oh, let's go back. Let's go back. Reverse this train. So, Novimpia. Accent. Phone interrupted. Miraberry pissing off the stage. Fuck. Was that it? Oh, well. Go from there. So, she goes off. Screams Lakeland. And hobbles off. Oh, yes. It only lasted a good 25-ish minutes. It was nothing. I was quite disappointed. So, yeah, left after that. I had to reconcile myself. Thank God the limoncello stand was right outside. Nearly threw up. No, last, because I've been there years prior, and they do, like, an oyster stand. And I love oysters, but I can't eat them. It's so sad. No, I remember where we were. <laughs> Fuck it. We'll carry on. Uh, they do, like, an oyster stand. And for some reason, I think I can't have oysters, because every time I have them, a few hours later, I'm puking. Like shellfish, not shellfish. What would you call them? Clams type of like things in a shell. That's not... I can have crab and lobsters. It's beautiful. But no, oysters. A little bit of sea salt in it and knock it back. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely lovely. I think I can have them when they're cooked. I've had them when they're cooked and I've been fine. It's just raw. But I love them raw. It's beautiful. Just, It's like a little... Secret parcel from the sea. You just knock them open, knock them back. Bob's your uncle. But no, every time I seem to have them. So I was walking past that one. And I was looking at it like puppy dog eyes. Oh no. And obviously they're trying to drag everyone to buy their shit. So I walk past looking like a right weirdo. Like the slow walk of longing. And they're like, do you want one, sir? I was like, I can't, I can't. They went, no, you can't, of course you can. Come on. I was like, I really can't. I don't think they got it. So they just go, come on. I was like, right, I'm getting annoyed now. Shut up. Piss off, I don't want your bloody seashells. <clears throat> don't know where that was going. So this coffee's going straight to my head. Speaking of which. Oh. Beautiful. That. Ooh, I had too much. <clears throat> anyway, back to the bit I was at. Yes, I was at someone's house. And she was preparing chicken. And she was like, I did a marinade, just a bit of olive oil, a bit of rosemary or something on it. Because we were going to have it for dinner. And you know, like, sort of, her hands are covered in olive oil because she's, like, mixing it about. And she only licks her fingers like she's stuck it in a sweet pot. Like, <coughs> I nearly dropped Oh my god, it was absolutely disgusting. I was looking at her for a good, like, solid minute with my jaw near the floor. And she looked at me, she's like, what? All right, you fucking joking me? Then again, she was Spanish. And I've been there for a while. Their culinary skills are appalling. <laughs> There's no... If any of them opened a kitchen, it would be shut down within an instant. Absolutely appalling. They're just tossing everything around. Sticking their hand in an egg. And then just rubbing it on a bit of bread. I, I, it's... Oh, it's absolutely appalling. I had to phone someone. I had to phone someone to consult myself. I found, I found that thing... I thought it was my mother, because she... We, me and her are quite... We're quite chiffy, let's say. We're quite big on food. We're quite big. So I phoned her, and she did the same. 
she like dropped the phone in shock. And I was like, thank God someone phones. But I thought, okay, now I'll get someone else's opinion because maybe it's just me. It's not. It's not me at all. It's her. That was disgusting. I phoned someone else up. He was a friend. And he was like, no, I've, I've, I've done that. I've done that once. It's not like a that big of a deal. So, we're no longer friends. <laughs> That's wrong. I can't be dealing with that. Anyway, so, on from there, I'd like to talk about the new Harry Potter. I wonder what I'm going to title this. I don't know. Hang on. Let me just have a little look at my notes. I made a few notes. I oh, know. So professional. Uh, oh, yes. I forgot to mention. <laughs> There was some of the stands, like, it was a meat one and there was a cheese, there was a few. They had like, you know, Wheel of Fortune type-esque thing where you spin it and you get like a little prize. It's like just shitty merchandise. They're like, yes, have a weird biscuit, have a hat. So I was in the queue and I went with someone and they like, so I was, we split up. It's like, I want to go and find the oyster thing or the, and I want to go and find the Chinese one, they're giving out little free samples of salad and a dressing. It's beautiful. So we split up. And then I got a phone, right, get here now. And I was like, what? It's like, I'm, I'm at one of the spinny things. I said, all right, I'll be over. And it's a bloody long queue. So I follow the queue. And they're near the front. And they went, come in, cut in, cut in. And they span before I got there. So I just kind of, like, slid in. And the looks that I got. Oh... <gasps> They were acting like I'd come into their house on Christmas Day and pissed on their kids. <sniffs> Thank you, Peter Kay. It was... No, God, the faces. It was brilliant. I was terrified. Because I was span. And I did like a half-assed spin because I was so scared. <laughs> I was like, if I do it any faster, they'll get like... Angry, like pricked up. You're like, you know when you don't want to be too quick or loud near a rabid animal? It was kind of the same thing. So I kind of did a little spin, and I got a hat. And it was shit, because the, my friend got a hat. So we both had hats. We couldn't even, like, swap and change. It was shit. But hey-ho, free hat. Uh, yes, so, Harry Potter. Well, it's not Harry Potter, is it? It's, um, the Fantastic Beasts. That night, it was after the Birmingham Food Festival, actually. I wanted to go and see it, because there was a cinema near the hotel. I was like, oh, go on, why not? Because I want to see it. Because I'm quite, I'm quite the fan of Harry Potter. And all that jazz. All that jazz. Do -do -do -do. So I went to go and see it. Uh, what's it called? Fantastic. Crimes of Grindelwald. It was... Blah. It was so blah. It was... It certainly wouldn't make any sense if you've... One, not a hardcore fan. And two, not seen the previous one. It was okay. First of all, the opening scene was so fucking busy. It was really disorientating, and the lighting I found was shit. I couldn't really make out what was happening because as soon as you wrapped your head around one scene, like right, he's pointing his wand at someone. It already changed like three scenes. It was like, very disorientating. I didn't like it. Uh, so this one, spoilers. If you don't want to watch it, I'd skip forward. <laughs> I don't know when to, though. I'll try. Well, it's not really a spoiler. It's um, set in mostly Paris. They're in Paris this time. And, well, they don't have the... Oh, no, it's not that time yet. Never mind. <laughs> Inner dialogue coming out. Pretty much what this podcast is, though, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's set in Paris. They're in... Pa Le Grand Paris. Uh, what was I saying? Yes. So the opening scene is uh, obviously it's Johnny Depp. And what do I think of Johnny Depp as Grindelwald? I honestly don't know. I must admit, by this point, because I've been up since five o'clock that morning, and it was quite late. Eight o'clock? Eight o'clock-ish. I was absolutely fucked. I was slightly hungover. <laughs> From all the free drinks. 
And all I really had to eat was like bits of cheese and sausages. And so yeah, I was kind of not full concentration, let's say. But yeah, him as Grindelwald was kind of it was it didn't feel like Grindelwald should because if you've read the books, he's mentioned a lot more, especially like seven, book seven. He's kind of like I don't know. In my head, that's not what he looked like or sounded like. I mean, with a name like Grindelwald, surely he should be... Is he Bulgarian? Not Bulgarian. Like, East European. Southeast European-ish. East European. Kind of thing. All right. But it was just... You, I could, all I could see... All I could see... Accent wavered a bit. Was Johnny Depp. Playing like a darker Jack Sparrow. That was kind of it. But that's not to say I disliked it terribly. I need to watch it again. It didn't really... It was quite, kind of jarring. I don't know. I have to watch it again. I liked the writing. The writing was good. And some of the and some of the scenes were very good. I liked... They, they seem to be doing a thing now ever since... Um, and I know this will carry on. Oh, excuse me while I adjust myself. Oh, fuck. Uh, since Infinity War, the Avengers film. They seem to be giving the villain like some moral compass that the audience can get along with like oh no i can understand why he's doing it like for example thanos he was like i'm gonna kill half the world instantly like right fuck you but then he goes right no because all the resources are being eaten up and you'll end up just killing yourselves anyway it'll be a lot worse i'm saving you and then you're kind of like oh shit and you're like oh this could be in parliament type of thing so it's giving them a quite oh fuck sorry I'm hitting things oh this isn't a very comfortable chair anyway like a giving them a moral compass and it's fair it's oh, I don't know I, I like it I must admit because I've always identified with the villains a lot more anyway since I was a child I was always rooting for Scar and the Lion King for Jafar to win I was very upset when they didn't I mean the heroes have always bored the shit out of me they're so good and loyal and friendly to all living creep. Fuck that. Give me a wand and I'm going to fucking blast the shit out of you all. So I can get on board with that. But his kind of moral compass is like, I don't want to completely obliterate the muggles. Because that's just weird. They're not lesser than us. They're just of a different value type of thing. And if they, if they don't... If things don't change, we're fucked. And I don't want that, because we're brilliant. Because we've got fucking magic sticks. And I'm, I'm kind of on board. I'd join him, let's be honest. If I had a magic stick, I'd be like, Hello, Grindo. Oh, that should be the new film. Hello, Grindo. But no, I can get on board. Very clever the way they did things. They used uh, past references, like World War Two, because it hadn't happened yet. Was it World War One? I? I forget when this was set. It was one of the world wars. And he was using that type of influence. This is complete spoiler territory. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, you'll be fine. Deal with it. I did warn you. So, is he, like using that as, to influence them. Like, this is what's going to happen. I don't know how he knows. I think it's World War Two. Must be. I think it is, yeah. Yes, because they use the this example of the Hiroshima bomb. World War, yeah, yeah, it's that time. And he's using that influence. Look what they're going to do to each other. Imagine what they're going to do to us, type of thing. So we need to strike first. But he's kind of like, right, I'm not fucking... Basically, so I'm not Hitler. I'm not kind of going down that line. I don't want mass genocide. I just need to do what is necessary. Will you join me, brothers and sisters, type of thing. But anyway, um, yes, it's very clever. I like it. It progresses a bit more his character it becomes a bit more de they like reveal new things like how he's thinking things like that there is one brilliant bit because it's so dark and I didn't think they'd do it obviously uh, Grindelwald needs somewhere to stay so I don't know how he picks it it's just like a random house in Paris like a safe house and he goes in and he kills the two people who own it like, okay it's mine now and then they're like talking, a bit of dialogue, and they hear a child in the next room. 
And they're like, oh, slow, turn around, look at the camera. Oh, what will we do? So he goes into the room with his acolytes behind him. Nails down, looks at the child dead in the eye. The child doesn't do anything except stare at him like, what the fuck am I looking at? And then he kind of just gets up, walks out of the room. But one of his acolytes, his followers, stay there. And you know exactly what's going to happen. And as, as he's closing the door, you see a flash of green light. And you know she's killed him, the little git, the child. Only like two, three years old, if that. And he's slowly closing the door. And he looks a bit like, oh, fucking hell, that was a bit dark even for me. So it's very differently layered in certain aspects. I think that was very brave, certainly. But no, things like that. That's the only kind of really dark thing. There are places where it falls flat on its ass. For example... That's the cat. For example, the entire premise... Not the premise. What am I thinking? I've gone blank again. The entire thing, yeah, the entire thing, it relies so heavily on if you're a hardcore fan and you've watched every single one in depth. Kind of weird. Also... It's not a standalone film. You have to know what's going on. Excuse me, it's definitely a stepping stone. Because nothing really big happened. Nothing really big happened at all. Nothing like, oh, that would have been good, and then cut it. It's because it's the it's the age of franchised movies. My dears, it is. It's terrible. It's No film can just be a standalone film. And if it's good, then we'll make a second one. It's like, right, we're coming into this making 15. And it... it, it it can show. It shows. But there were some lovely little uh, aspects for people. Not even hardcore fans. Well, maybe. Not really hardcore. Uh, some characters that you've never seen before, but you've heard of, definitely. One. Okay, definitely breaching into spoilers now. So, turn off. But don't. Keep listening to me. Don't leave me here on my own. Uh, Nicolas Flamel. He's in it. I think he is French. It's kind of a... Definitely a European name. Uh, Nicholas Vermel's in it. He is a beaut. Absolute treasure. He plays a brilliant part. He's hopping about like a fucking weirdo. It's brilliant. And then he opens... He, he, want, he wants something out of his little safe and he opens it. And the Philosopher's Stone's there. And you're like, oh, I remember that from like fucking ages ago. So he opens, opens it. And it's not like a quick little Easter egg. He opens it gets what he wants, shuts it again, and it's like a big glowing stone, and you're like, oh, that'll be important later. Uh, no. Yeah, what, what else happens? The last, the best bit of the film is, and I, I don't feel like they meant it to be, but it was. They definitely wanted it to be prevalent, because oh, I loved it. It's like a scene, uh, Newt disapparates, and then they go on to the next scene, and it's like you're panning up a cliff, like a mountain, like do do do. And then when you bank it, you can see off in the distance Hogwarts. And then the the old music comes. Do 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 do. I got, I got ass chills. Oh, I tell you, it was brilliant. I was like, oh my god, I remember, I remember the magic of my childhood. And then it ruins it by. Making Jude Law walk up the causeway. I was like, okay, there we go, we're back. Okay, on that note, Jude Law as Dumbledore. I don't like him as Dumbledore. I really like the character that he's playing, but it doesn't feel like Dumbledore. I have a few more issues. One, one, he's definitely researched that role because he knew, he could not, he knew that everyone hated him as the cast choice originally. So he did his research. There are definitely aspects of the old Dumbledore in there, like little mannerisms, little way he says things. So he's done his research. Kudos for that. <coughs> Bravo. But it doesn't feel like Dumbledore. It just feels like a weird little teacher. Or someone. It doesn't feel like anyone, really. It, just feel like a, it feels like a new character. And I didn't want that. I wanted to hark back. They could have picked someone else. They could have. But I don't know who. <laughs> Uh, one thing, maybe it's like it's meant to happen. Maybe they envisioned it, but everyone is wearing normal clothes. Everyone, all the wizards, they're wearing like proper period clothing. 
like the suits, waistcoats, little pocket watch. Wizards have always dressed like fucking weirdos. They kind of they they dress in eccentric colours and flowy robes. That's how I've always wanted to dress. That's why I always have to shop in the women's section to get anything flowy. But yeah, they're like flowy eccentric clothing, fucking weird colours, weird shaped hats. No, they're just wearing a suit. Right. There's no ma they give it it lent no magic to the character, which was needed. And I know they could go along the lines of, well, he has to interact with the muggles quite a lot, doesn't he? Well, most of the time he's at Hogwarts, so that's crock of shit. No, but it wasn't just him. It was like uh, another spoiler, Minerva McGonagall's in it. Only like fleeting. Like she's in it for like two minutes. Uh, she's wearing kind of period clothing, like a weird dress. I can understand the ministry doing it, because they're like talking to muggles all the time. They'll have to interact like, Go incognito. My fucking phone. I should have turned it off. Sorry, it's on charge. Um, they like going incognito doing things. So I can understand that. But, like, normal wiz wizards and witches should be wearing weird stuff like medieval shit. That's what they're known for. That disappointed me a bit. But, very end... Well, not the very end scene. The... No, I'll leave that bit in a minute. Hang on, no. Right. What I want to talk about now, same thing, is that what the main direction the film wanted, what was the main, oh, what's the word, the main thing they were focusing on, the main storyline, was Credence, the Obscurial. See, I remember words. Uh, Obscurial, the chap from last time. He's not dead. Who? Not really a spoiler, because it was in the fucking trailer, so that was shit. He wants to know where I'm from. Where am I from? Who's my family? I need to know my mother, type of thing. And that was the whole reason for a lot of the escalation. Because Grindelwald wanted him to kill Dumbledore, because he couldn't. Spoilers, again... You've been warned plenty of time now. If you've been spoiled, it's your own fucking fault. And... So he's trying to manipulate him. But the thing... They try to make you care about Credence. And I don't. I He does my teeth in. He's so boring. It's like Mopey. Do you know what? He's like... A teenage Snape. Or a Potter. But a bit more angry. Mopey, miserable, shit, boring. <laughs> it, I didn't care. And his best friend, don't know how it came about, seems to be Nagini, who turns out to be a woman. Didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> that was it, just I'm a lady who can... I've got a condition that makes me turn into a snake, and eventually I'll just stick. But she's, the weird thing is, I thought she'd be evil, or have evil tendencies. No, she's really good. She's like on Newt's side for everything, like, go Newt. So I'm only assuming that when she does turn into a snake, she's still kind of... Oh, she's completely snake, like animal, or she is a good snake. It's a weird saying. I'm a good snake. And Voldemort's just like, right, no, Slytherin... No, what's it called? Parcel tongue. I'm going to do that, and I'll control you now. The weird thing is, in the books, he milks her. Oh, that's taken a weird turn. He he milks Nagini and drinks milk to get him strong before he turns... In, like, the fourth book. Before he gets his body back. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, I'm going to put that coffee down. How long have I been going? And now, oh, I'm going to start after wrapping up. But there's just so much to say! Uh, what else happened? Try and rattle off this quickly. Um... So yeah, it tries to make you care about where he's from, who he is, like a big secret. Oh, is it that one? No, twists and turns. And I was really, really bored me. I didn't care about him at all. It was shit. I wanted more Newt in it. I thought they'd go along his storyline. His was kind of like the second one, secondary. He was in it a lot more, because obviously Eddie Redmayne, Queen, he played a very good part. He doubled down on that fucking insecure, like, I'm not going to look him in the eye, but I love you, type of thing. And... So yeah, so it, but it was it was 
kind of it felt like the whole thing was a build up and nothing came at the end there was a twist at the end but it, at that point you were just like okay right i don't give a shit now this is the biggest spoiler this is what the film leads up to so if you don't want to listen now skip ahead like two three minutes maybe five to play it safe well actually i don't know how long i'm supposed to be on here I'm supposed to be on oh well just skip uh, the main thing is credence turns out to be a dumbledore Ooh, he's not he's just lying to him but uh, it's like only a phoenix will come to a dumbledore and he throws a wheel of bird up in the air and it turns into a phoenix and then Credence gets a wand and shoots a mount and it falls apart. And he's like, I'm a Dumbledore. I can go and kill my brother now. Albus is not his brother. I don't know where they're going with that. I hope she hasn't, J.K. Rowling has just phoned it in like, oh yeah, there was another one, didn't you know? <laughs> well, you should have read harder. Fuck you. Uh, before that, the kind of end battle scene is Grindelwald, for some unknown fucking reason, turns into a big blue fire dragon. Fuck knows. Shoots up in the sky. They're in like a catacomb, the catacombs. And he shoots up in the sky and he's like, and I'm, oh, I'm going to burn Paris to the fucking ground. So they've got the lock come out. Newt, all his little friends, brother comes along. Uh, Nicholas Flamel. And he goes, right, what you want to do to get rid of your pesty, pesky dragon is shove your wand in the ground. So they all do that and it's fine. That's it. A few little wand waving going to shoot you. There you go. Back in the catacombs. And then the fire dragon gets sucked back into the catacombs. And then nothing happens. It just goes on to the next scene. Nothing happens. I thought Grindelwald was trapped in there for a bit. No. I don't know what the fucking point that was. It just... Nothing happened. Nothing. It was shit. Oh, I don't know. But, yeah. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. So the best bit was going and seeing Hogwarts again. That was beautiful. But also like that little... I love the little bits. Like they just flick the wand and everything like packs itself or repairs itself. They had a little hair selfie. was giving it clicking. Things were like shoving back in the thing. Oh, it was brilliant. I love those bits. Uh, yeah. Can't think of anything else really. It was... I, if you've watched the first one, you kind of have to watch this one. But you know... If you miss it, the world won't end. Anyway, I think that should wrap it up nicely. Well, this has been the first of, I hope, many, because I'm going to keep talking, even if no one listens. Uh, yes, this is going to be what I'm thinking of doing for this channel, because this is like a separate channel to my contemplation one, is I'm going to do a bit more. I'm going to do my own podcast, solo podcast. Don't know what to call it. Connor's Corner. That nah, shit. Connor's Coffee Corner. Fuck that. Um, I'll think of something. And I'm going to do a few videos. I'm going to start. I'm trying to plunge into the YouTube world. I don't know why. <laughs> I just think it'd be a bit of fun. Yes, I'd like to dive into the YouTube world. I want to try and do some things. I've got some things in the works. Hopefully they'll work. Maybe not. Who's to say? But anyway, enough of that. Thank you ever so much for listening, whoever you are, you beautiful little tea kettle. And I do hope you enjoyed it. This is this is the type of thing to do when you're just sitting down and you've got nothing to do. I'm the good thing to have on in the background while you're doing the dishes. Or packing, or shitting, I don't know. Yes, as I said, I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, don't know when I'll release another one. I might film one after this and release it different dates. Who's to say? But thank you ever so much again. And I hope you enjoyed listening. Now, I have to realise. How do I stop it? Let's say, okay. Love you. Bye.